everyone. Today we are talking about slope and rate of change. Our essential question is, how do you calculate rate of change and slope? In our toolbox up at the top, we've got rate of change, slope. We have a formula here, m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And I have a little reminder about how coordinates or ordered pairs are written. They're written x comma y, but when we've got two of them, like we'll have in these problems, it'll be x1, y1 for the first coordinate, and x2, y2 for the second coordinate. So let's start off by looking at our slope formula, y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. This is a formula that you're going to want to write on your reference sheet. This is a formula that we will be using for the rest of this school year, and you will keep using this all through geometry and algebra two. You will keep needing this formula, so it's one that you're really gonna need to commit to memory. I have these in different colors. If you wanna grab different colored, colored pencils or pens or highlighters, then that would be fine. It'll help you so you can see where the numbers are coming from. And these colors are the same as what I have written here with my x1, y1, x2, y2. Reminder, I already said this up here. These ones go towards the first coordinate and the twos go towards the second coordinate. They don't mean anything other than first and second. That's all they mean. In general, your slope means the rise over the run. So the numerator or the top number is how many spaces up or down you will go on a graph. The denominator, the run number, is how many spaces left or right. What we will talk about in our next set of notes is we're pretty much always going to be running to the right as long as you use your numerator for the positives and negatives. But we will get to that in our next set of notes. So let's look at our first example. And it says to calculate the slope. So I wanna calculate the slope of this, these two coordinates or ordered pairs. So first I'm gonna, I'm gonna just write out my x1, y1 and x2, y2. So my first coordinate, these are going to be the ones. My second coordinate, those are going to be the twos. And I'm gonna keep with the same color. So we've got x1, y1, and then we've got x2 for the second coordinate, and y2. Once you get them labeled, you can put them in the formula. So our formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, well let's fill in our numbers that we've got labeled. Our y2, we had that right here. Our y2 is a negative two. And then our formula says minus our y1. Well, y1 is positive two. over our x2, well our x2 is 8, and then our formula says minus our x1, and our x1 is 5.
Now let's simplify. We have negative 2 minus 2. Well, negative 2 minus 2 more is a negative 4. Over 8 minus 5. Well, 8 minus 5 is 3. So we have the fraction negative 4 thirds. Can we simplify this anymore? No, we can't. That's as simple as it will go because we do not write our slopes as mixed numbers. So we wouldn't rewrite this as negative 1 and 1 third. No, we don't do that. We leave this as an improper fraction. It cannot simplify anymore. So there is our answer. Negative 4 thirds is our slope. Done. So let's look at our next example. Well, this looks weird. This isn't written as coordinates, but that's okay because this is a list of all of our x's and their y's that they go with. So we can just pick two coordinates because this would be like saying 3 comma negative 6 and 5 comma 2, 7 comma 10, 9 comma 18. Well, we don't need all of them. We just need two of them. So I'm just going to pick the first two. I'm going to call this first x our x1. And I'm going to call the first y our y1. I'm going to call the second x our x2. And I'm going to call the second y our y2. Please understand, if I pick the first x, I have to also pick the first y. If I pick the second x, I have to also pick the second y because they go together. Okay, so let's write out our formula. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If you write out your formula each time, you'll be able to commit it to memory a little bit quicker. So first thing in our formula is y2. Well, our y2 is 2. Then our formula says minus our y1 which is negative 6 over x2, which is 5 minus x1, which is 3. Now we have something that should stand out to you. You can't have minus a negative number. When you have minus a negative number, that turns into a big plus sign right here. So in the numerator, we have 2 plus 6 and 2 plus 6 is 8 over, in our denominator we have 5 minus 3, well 5 minus 3 is 2, and this says 8 divided by 2. We can simplify this because 8 divided by 2 is 4. And 4 is our slope. And that's how you calculate slope. So again, I'm going to say it doesn't matter if your coordinates are written out in coordinate form. 
if they're written out in table form, if you can find them on a graph. It doesn't matter how they're written out. You calculate it the same way. If I move my notes up, I have some things to add to this. So note, linear functions have a constant slope. They have a constant slope. It means the slope is always the same because a line would be rising over running the same amount throughout the entire line. It's constant, it's the same. I talked about this already. Slope is written as a fraction. You simplify the fraction as much as possible, like we did in example two. And you write mixed numbers as improper fractions. So you would never write it as one and a half. You would never write it like this. You would write it as three halves. like we saw in example one. Now in our title, in our toolbox, and our essential question, we said rate of change, but we haven't talked about that at all up until here. And the reason is because the rate of change is the same as the slope. The only difference is that you have to actually divide out your answers on a calculator and that you can have decimals with rate of change. You're not going to have decimals with slope, but you can have decimals with rate of change. So I want you to beef up your notes over here, and I want you to write that slope will not have decimals when you're calculating it, unless it started with a decimal. But rate of change, you need to actually divide that out. Slope is written as a fraction, rate of change divided out. Now the last thing that I want to do and if you can't fit this on your notes, that's okay. Please write it on a separate sheet of paper or on an index card and you can staple it to this page. But I wanna show you the basics. I'm just gonna sketch four teeny tiny grids on here. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be big, nothing like that. But I wanna write out the general shape of what the different slopes will look like. You read all graphs from left to right. So if you have a slope that from left to right goes up, that is going to be positive. If you have a slope when you are reading it from left to right that goes down, that is going to be negative. If you have a slope that is a horizontal line like the horizon, across like the horizon, a slope that is a horizontal line is a zero slope. Like literally the number zero. And if you have a slope that is a vertical line straight up and down, that slope is going to be undefined. undefined. So reminder, we read all graphs from left to right. From left to right, if we go up, yay, that's good, that's positive. From left to right, if we fall down, oh, boo, that's negative. From left to right, if we don't go up anything or down anything, that was zero. From left to right, if we ah, fell down our line, we are undefined. And those are the general layouts of slope. So when you are calculating slope, if you get a positive number, your graph better look like that. 
If you get a negative number, it better look like that. Same with zero and undefined. It is a good way to check yourself visually if you are given a graph. I hope you enjoyed these notes and you learned a little bit about slope and rate of change.